The World Packaging Organization and World Design Organization recently announced a joint initiative to host a two-week World Design Challenge on sustainable packaging with a goal of identifying new sustainable packaging design solutions. Um, at Packaging Europe, we're, we were very excited to hear about this and uh, I'm really delighted today to have the opportunity to learn more about it from the heads of the two respective collaborating bodies, namely uh, Professor P uh, Pierre Pinar, uh, President of the World Packaging Organization, and his counterpart, Srini Srinivasan, President of the World Design Organization. Thanks very much for joining me today, uh, Srini and Pierre. Oh, it's really good to be with you. Um, so uh, I should say uh, an additional thank you to, to both of you for making yourselves available at particularly uncivilized hours. Um, Srini is located in California and Pierre is on the, the east coast of Australia. So I believe it's four o'clock in the morning for Srini right now and nine in the evening for Pierre, which uh, makes me feel rather guilty to be the lucky guy in the <laughs> European time zone um, in the middle of my working day. Very comfortable. I've had plenty of coffee and um, I'm good to go. Thanks, guys. So, um, Srini, uh, um, I'd like to, um, to start by asking you um, about uh, this concept. I understand that the World Design Organization introduced um, as a broader concept the, the World Design Challenge last year. Could you um, give us some background on, on this idea? Absolutely. Thank you for uh, having me on this call. And uh, uh, World Design Organization, previously known as ICSID, they have been doing uh, a different format of the design challenge. We used to call them as interdesign. And in 1971 onwards, we've been doing this where uh, different uh, people come together, probably around you know uh, 40 to 50 designers from across the world. They come to a particular city and try to solve the problems of that uh, city over a two week in-person uh, meeting. So this was a very successful program, but due to the challenges involved in bringing 40, 50 people to one location, uh, it's also uh, pro bono. So, you know, it was not easy for us to do it. The last one of them was done in 2014 in uh, Mumbai, where we brought in about 50 designers from outside the country and we discussed uh, challenges the city was going through. So when, we, uh, when I had the chance, you know, we were locked down in March of uh, 2020 and uh, everything was stopped because otherwise uh, WDO's mission is to go to different cities and solve the problems of the design community together with the local authorities. So when uh, we were locked down, so then, um, so we came up with the idea that, you know, we could do convert our original interdesign into a design challenge, which could be done through uh, online and, uh, you know, through, um, so we, we were quite successful when we did the, the first one was on uh, COVID awareness because it was really, really pandemic and the WHO has announced as the pandemic and we were all panicking as to, we don't know what to do, how to do. So it was the first of the, uh, a digital serial uh, design challenge, it's a world design challenge. And then we successfully launched it over a two week period. So that was the beginning, uh, March of 2020. And from then we have been quite successfully uh, managing the world design challenges. And I, I think it's here to go in the future as well. Okay, that's great. And so it seems like it was a shift from a more of a sort of geographically based uh, challenge to uh, more of a conceptual, you know, looking at a particular topic, which which is relevant um, across wide Absolutely. geographical spans. Absolutely, it's also pertinent to mention here that from a, a we moved when we changed our uh, objectives uh, and became World Design Organization. We also uh, adopted more solutions oriented approach rather than a purely an industrial design oriented approach. So that's a significant shift from uh, exit to WDO. And uh, this is in line with that. So where we are solving global community related problems. And that's one of the uh, highlights of our uh, world design challenge as we see today. Great. So um, this is this is where we can introduce the the specific uh, collaboration. And and Pierre, I'd be really interested to hear how uh, the World Packaging Organization came to uh, to collaborate uh, with uh, the WDO um, to uh, to initiate this idea. Well, it's quite an interesting uh, 
why it came about. Um, but firstly, thank you very much for for uh, for allowing the two of us to be on the show together. Um, it, it goes back a couple of years, uh, back in 2018, um, our senior vice president, Luciana Pellegrino from Brazil, uh, happened to be in Beirut in Lebanon, uh, judging a um, an Arab star, which is that region's uh, packaging um, award system. And um, one of the other judges was um, the president-elect of the WDO, a gentleman by the name of David Kasuma out of Florida. And, and she met him and uh, she was very impressed um, with him and obviously the organization. And she came back and mentioned this to myself. And uh, at that stage, I was fairly new in my role. And, you know, it, it, yeah, it sort of went in, but didn't really register as, as you know, was it of substance for us was it value for, for the WPO to collaborate with them. And then um, the following year, they had a, uh, a World Congress in Hyderabad in uh, India. And um, Luciana got hold of me again and said, listen, it's in Hyderabad. Uh, one of our colleagues, our, our global ambassador, Chakravati, uh, can he attend? And I said, for sure, it's, it's the same city. So, let, you know, make sure he goes along. And he did. And there he met David Kasuma again, and then also Srini uh, in Hyderabad in 2019. And um, well, Chakravati, as you, as you, I'm sure you've met him, he, he doesn't let anything lie down. And he was like a bull with a, with a bone, a bulldog with a bone. And he kept on me, um, you know, have you contacted Srini? Have you contacted David? And this went on probably uh, maybe six weeks. So I, I picked the telephone up and, and, and called David. Uh, and we had a, a couple of chats uh, over over a couple of weeks, which then led for uh, for me to then be introduced to Srini, uh, and and we had some uh, discussions, and, and there was value. I mean, I immediately saw the value in in collaborating with them, uh, and then it just it just it just was it compounded and it moved exceptionally fast from that stage. We were meeting um, uh, about every second week. Uh, the two organizations, our executive and their executive. And um, then they came up with this design challenge. And it's been absolutely amazing. We are thrilled. We, we, we love it. We enjoy meeting with them. And there's a great bunch of guys and, and a couple of ladies. And uh, it's really, it's a challenge for us as well, um, learning all about this design stuff. You know, it's, it's all left brain thinking. And the majority of us are right brain, uh, uh, sorry, other way around. We left brain and they right brain, uh, and um, and we're finding synergy. It's challenging. Uh, I'm, I think that at times the WDO gets frustrated with the WPO, um, but it's all in good. It's all in, 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 in it's all part of what a, a learning curve for us, and they're learning the technical side of packaging, which is only one aspect of their design portfolio. Um, but I, I see great things coming along in this whole process. Thanks, Pierre. That's that's a great story, and it's nice to to see the buy-in from the the various continents that are represented uh, by the the World Packaging Organization. Um, so I'd like to to burrow more into the the specifics of of what we want to achieve through this this uh, exciting collaboration. And I know that um, the World Design Challenge for Sustainable Packaging poses seven specific uh, problems, um, and perhaps. For the benefit of the audience, I'll, I'll just briefly summarize those. Um, the first one is designing sustainable packaging solutions for e-commerce. The second is um, looking at redesigning packaging to reduce consumer food waste. The third is uh, sustainable food service delivery packages to, to reduce packaging waste. The fourth is looking at uh, designing sustainable packaging for healthy and on-the-go lifestyles. The fifth is um, to improve packaging sustainability in communities where no collection systems are in place. Um, the sixth is developing child-proof packaging that's also easy to open for um, elderly people. And the last and seventh is uh, changing consumer behavior to increase sustainable habits. So um, my impressions um, as, as I read those um, in summary were, I guess that they address many of the, the key objectives for sus packaging sustainability, but um, above all, they're, they're looking at um, the way that uh, sustainability and packaging functionality, and in, in particular, 
um, the human engagement with, with packaging um, intersect. Um, so, um, Pierre, perhaps could you could give us an insight on, on how these seven challenges were selected and um, whether overall the objective was to identify not just the, the top sustainability challenges, but sp specifically ones where um, the world could benefit from the intervention of the kind of fresh design thinking and that, you know, that left brain, right brain uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. interaction. Yeah, what, what it was, this in itself was an intriguing process, I have to add. I know that amongst the WPO, we thought, you know, how is this going to happen? How, how are they going to ultimately come up with this, this challenge? You know, where are they going to get this information from? Um, lo and behold, the information was going to come out of us. But how are they going to extract that information to make it a challenge to all and sundry out there, you know, these design guys that are anywhere in the world. Um, and, and they've got a, a really good process, um, methodical uh, way of going about it. So, you know, we had to look at, we looked at the entire spectrum of packaging. Uh, and as you rightly said, you know, the, the aspects that, that uh, all of us come from different spheres of packaging. Um, our entire executive team, you know, from the journal journalistic science to the, to the high tech science to the, 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 the graphic people, etc. And to bring them all into the same room, and we all have our own um, issues in terms of packaging. We're all seeing packaging from a different perspective. All of a sudden, we're all in the same room, uh, voicing our opinions. And so, uh, over several weeks, remember, we were, we were meeting. Uh, at that stage, every second week, we now meet once a week. Um, but it, we were extracting what all the aspects were that were troublesome in the marketplace or a challenge in the marketplace or an issue. That's what we looked at first. And we were all giving ideas. So we came up with an array of, of, of ideas. I, I, you know, I can't remember the exact number, Sweeney. You might remember the number. Was it about 50 or 60? Uh, more, more than that, so around 75 <laughs> or so. <laughs> so we were. Right. I was yeah. conservative. But so now what? You know, how are they going to break this down? I mean, you've got to have 70 something challenges. And um, once you start sitting and you're evaluating each one and, you, and you're really pulling it apart, you actually find that there could be a 10, 11, 12 uh, that are very similar and, and they sort of intertwine. And, and so we had to reword them and, and then and slowly break that down. And then we whittled that number down. And I remember Sweeney saying uh, early on in the piece, you know, when we had the 70 something, you know, we, we thought, oh, yeah, Sweeney and, and you guys, you try and fix this one. I want to see you come up with 10 or whatever the number was. And but right up early on, you know, uh, Sweeney mentioned, you know, we, we'll get this thing down to, you know, probably eight or 10. Um, and, and yeah, through a process of elimination and, 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 and sort of, um, challenging the, 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 the art of the English language uh, came, to, came into play. And um, we ultimately came up with this, with this seven. Uh, but you must understand that the advantage uh, that the WPO has is because we've got 60 odd countries out there that all belong to our organization. It meant that we could go out to all this, you know, uh, through our network, our various um, uh, platforms of communication and said, you know, give us any ideas of, of, of aspects that you'd like to throw into the pot. And so these 70 odd did not only come from the, from the six or seven of us uh, uh, in that room, from the WPO side, it came from 60 odd countries, you know, uh, and that was the good part about it. So this is a global uh, opportunity, but it, it came from a global source. It's not just a handful of people. And I think that is the exciting part. Indeed, yeah. So um, thank you for that. Um, I'd like to now get into the, um, the details of, of how the, um, the design challenge um, will practically um, evolve. So um, Srini, first of all, um, could you just uh, give us some of the, the basic details? Um, when is it actually going to be taking place and, and how is it structured? Yeah, I mean, as uh, Pierre mentioned, you know, so we uh, we use the design process uh, and uh, also the digital tools like the whiteboarding techniques, uh, Miro, Mural, all these kind of platforms, to 
to arrive at what is the most common denominator out of the 70 odd solutions that you know we can narrow it down. And once we narrow it down, we also put out a call for, uh, it's not like a hackathon. I mean, people are very familiar with the hackathon, but it's not, it's not nothing like a hackathon. And people have to really get down to doing things by themselves. They have to do their own research. They have to gather data around, you know, uh, different spectrums of the uh, challenge statements. And then they uh, have to come up with the possible solution. So we are not arriving at one single solution for each of the seven statements necessarily, but because you bring in a collective global audience and global participants, we have the opportunity to come with more than one possible solution that could be addressed because each of the regions could have a different, uh, for example, if you take the uh, sustainable packaging uh, for e-commerce, that could be different in South Africa versus, you know, in Vietnam, you know, or vice versa. So we have the ability to bring people and what we do through these design challenges is to make them think through the design process and among the team, the teams are typically around, uh, I would say uh, 15 to 16 people yeah. among the, you know, 200 plus uh, applicants that came through the 28 countries. We actually uh, have selected about 100, uh, which means you know about 100 divided by seven. So we are looking at 13, 14 uh, per team. And these people will start uh, discussing. And the challenge officially is starting on the 24th of uh, this month, and it'll last for two weeks. And uh, during these two weeks, every day there is an interaction between the teams. So that's, you know, you, you said, you know, it's a very odd hour for both of us. But we, because of the global uh, nature of the uh, you know uh, teams, so we get into this on a daily basis. You know, four o'clock is not a problem, and the teams meet themselves even much earlier or much later. And then uh, we have uh, every uh, third day we just have a check-in to see how they are doing, because a lot of these participants need not have the design background, but we have chosen. We are very fortunate, thanks to WPO and uh, PS leadership here, we were able to get some very quality packaging experience professionals, which is not normal in the design challenge, but here we are fortunate. We've got uh, excellent 100 plus people who are from the packaging industry, but they don't necessarily have the design background, but that's where we collaborate and then we are able to get uh, a good solution. So my hope out of this challenge is that we will have a very qualitative solutions because of the background of the participants and the leadership, you know, between Pierre and uh, my teams. Thank you. And I, I was curious about the backgrounds of the participants. So um, will it be a, a mixture of different uh, sort of professional uh, backgrounds, um, some some from within packaging, some some providing some uh, exterior perspectives on, on uh, these problems? Absolutely. We have marketeers, you know, who are uh, responsible for companies' products to be marketed. So therefore, you know, packaging, they want to see how to brand the products because marketing is always looking at how this packaging is attractive or not attractive. And then there's also engineering saying, oh, this is all great. Can we do it? You know, we may not be able to do this because, you know, of uh, either material challenges or the ability to uh, package. And then we have people from the finance department always, you know, with the shopping, you know, <laughs> can we really afford to spend so much on the packaging? You know, it's all looks attractive. Everything is cool, sustainable, but can be afforded as a small company can be afford. So we have a mix of people from the packaging industry. So we have, you know, uh, mechanical engineers who've been helping uh, packaging solutions. We have a few designers who have been packaging design for their companies. So all these come from a corporate world, right? And then we also have a whole bunch of you know people who are uh, from the academic side. You know they have been teaching the packaging uh, basics, you know, in their uh, in their in their curricula and stuff like that. And added to that, uh, there are a bunch of you know students who want to really participate. Either they are interested in the packaging design uh, in their academics or they are just interested because we have created such an awareness of the design challenge. It's a global platform and that, that attracts a lot of students. They want to learn. And so we have uh, added a uh, few students to every uh, uh, design uh, statement, seven of them, because our goal is to also uh, help the younger generation 
get into this you know at an early stage so therefore it uh, it meets our other goal of uh, helping the younger uh, students you know come up to uh, face you know the global challenges as they become older and get into a career options there Thank you. And you said that it's it's not like a hackathon. Um, I'm just interested a little bit more in the the ethos. Um, do I understand from what you've said so far that it will be more of a collaborative uh, effort um, rather than ha having you know competitive teams as you have in some of these uh, kinds of uh, challenges? Absolutely. As an example, right? We said sustainable packaging for the uh, healthy and on-the-go lifestyle, right? Let's take that. So that probably will, uh, there is no goal. I mean, this is a statement and let's say that we are the team, you know, that is uh, doing this. So we have never been given a goal saying this is what you need to do. We are saying, how can we come up with possible solutions? And as a team, because in hackathon, you always have a goal saying we need to get this, you know, we need to fix this, we need to uh, uh, dissect this, you know, but here we don't have any of those things. At the end of the two week, we as a team may come up with 15 possible solutions or we may come up with just one, it's possible, right? But that's not, uh, that's why it's not uh, very similar to the hackathon. And then here, what we do is there is no clear roadmap. We are not told, you know, do this, don't do this, that kind of stuff. So all that we are laid out is saying, hey, this is the concept. If you are doing this, or if you are an elder, so what would you do? So then you go and check on the people. And part of the reason is today's uh, topic is on the go, right? People want to spend a lot of time uh, so they don't have time for restaurants. And also because of the pandemic, you know, people have to do the on the go because we don't really have time. So that introduced a lot of challenges in terms of packaging material that is getting wasted. So how can we avoid it would be something that they will do. And they have to make the, the, the best part of the design challenge is they have to get involved in the design process per se. They just have to learn how do we do as a designer, I'm a packaging expert, but I have to get into the design process. And that's what we walk through. We also have uh, some of the design uh, 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 designers who will be part of the team and they bring their design expertise in terms of leading the rest of the team saying, you know, let's do this, you know, and walk them through because it's a international challenge and it's all done digitally. It's a lot easier than what one might imagine saying, how can we know? Because we have um, uh, tools that we onboard them on the day one or just before uh, they start. And then we walk them through, and then we are there all along, both the leadership team from uh, the WPO and WTO, we, we monitor and we watch, and we have an excellent team that provides technical support if they are not able to move forward in a particular aspect of the moving the design process from A to B to scenario. And then we also teach them if there is a, we have templates, like for example, you want to do a preliminary research then we have a template saying, what are the main issues around the on-the-go packaging in this example? Then they will come up with something. And if they don't, then we have a template saying, would this make sense for your team? Yes, no. And then they get the idea, right? So we walk them through. The goal for us is to <clears throat> introduce the design process and go make the participants go through it themselves. You know, they get the pleasure of doing it themselves rather than somebody telling you know them so that's the best part of the design challenge that's why it's so exciting that's great well i, I can say that you've both uh, further heightened my um inspiration and and curiosity about uh, this project and and that leads me to to my final question to to <clears throat> both of you really that um what what happens next um so first of all uh, when and how can we expect to hear about the the results of the the challenge and more broadly what are the, the desired outcomes that you, you see from this? Um, are we going to see uh, some kind of follow-up um, developing on those ideas? Um, do you envisage this being a kind of um, open, open source uh, activity where um, it's, it's open for you know, the, the rest of the world's packaging developers to, to build on those ideas and take inspiration from them? Um, Pierre, could you... Um, Comment on that first. Well, well a large sector of that uh, question, I'll, I'll let Srini answer. But what I what I do want to say before I hand over to him is that, as you can hear, it, it's a fascinating process. It, it's a process that, um, you know, I've been in this industry thirty seven years, and uh, there are quite a number of us in the team from the WPO that probably have in excess of twenty five years experience in the packaging industry. 
within our own field. So, you know, mine's more a, 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 chemically, a chemical type uh, arena and uh, coupled with engineering. Um, and you've got other guys in, a, in, the, in the graphic side, you've got others in, in, in um, uh, more the administrative type roles you know, of implementation. So no one there is really in the design side. And um, as far as we know, nothing like this has ever been done in, in the WPO since 1963. So these challenges that we are facing here, these seven challenges, they are real. They are, they, for us to move ahead into the sustainable world that we are trying so desperately to, to drive towards, let alone get fully into, will be a massive step for us, the WPO across the world, to become easier to be packaging of a sustainable type. And that is what is so uh, exciting for us. Mm. You know, for years, we've just plotted along and, and, and sort of um, uh, tried to make a go of it and, and make, you know, try to be recyclable, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're getting a situation where the front end, that design from start is the way it should be. So it's like a leapfrog effect that we that we are about to embark on, and that's all going to happen this year. You know, this this is going to happen in, in the next couple of months. You know, if you talk to us in a couple of months' time, we're going to have we, our smile is going to be broad. I mean, you, you, we've got a <laughs> smile on our face now, but it's going to be a lot bigger. And let me tell you, and this is the exciting part. We we can't wait to see what this. Well, we want to see the process. Uh, and, and how it's going to develop and how do these, how do different countries interact, you know, with different cultures, different languages, but they all speak the same language, I guess, when it comes to design and to put all this in the pot and then come up with an answer or answers. I think it's just unbelievable, you know, for, for us, you know, we really stay in stereotype in our type of uh, uh, work. So to have these designers that are, are, are so you know uh, way out there, uh, and, and their minds just think very different to an engineer's mind or a scientist's mind. I think it's just I don't know. I don't know the right word. Maybe terrific is probably the best word to describe it. Srini, I'll let you answer the other side of it. Thank you, thank you, Pierre. I think you know one of the uh, the best things. You know, it was not that packaging was not done efficiently before this challenge. WPO has been monitoring that uh, for so many years, since 63, as we know. But the aspect of design has become very prominently significant in our current business era. As you know, these companies that have adopted design have become a lot more uh, uh, profitable, a uh, lot more attractive, and a lot more uh, efficient in their businesses. This is a given, right? Design is something that we need to focus as opposed to uh, in the past. So given that in the uh, element added to the already uh, smart and existing packaging solutions that are there. So this gives us those aspects which are uh, now becoming universal because some countries follow certain prospects. That's why we said, you know, if there is no recollection of, you know, if there is no collection of plastics or if there is no uh, recyclability of a material that is used in a certain uh, industry, how do in a certain region, how do we overcome those challenges? How do we make uh, those people understand the uh, ethos around the sustainability so that you know, we can give them the idea of you know, shared learning? And that's part of WDO's mandate is shared learning so that if we learn something in one region, we want to make sure that the others also are going to get it. So I think that's the uh, primary uh, focus of all our engagement with world organizations. And as you know, we uh, we also adopted when we changed the name to World Design Organization, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 of them. And the last of the 17 uh, goals is the uh, partnership. And that's one of the reasons why we are seeking partnership because it's just not enough for us to uh, scream on top of a mountain saying, we need to do this, we need to do this, but we need to go and engage ourselves with different organizations, which are equally big, equally old, equally strong, and then work together in a very collaborative manner 
for solutions that will benefit the mankind or the humankind, right? And that's where I think our uh, collaboration between different organizations and therefore, you know, WPO also come in the same scenario. As far as your other questions in terms of uh, what the results are, as uh, you could see the excitement in peer, you know, like, you know, we are very, very happy to collaborate. Uh, and, the, and, and the participants will have the opportunity to present. I said, you know, it will be a two week uh, uh, scenario. On the first Friday, they'll be like, a, they also learn how to present it. You know, it's kind of teaching them, you know, how to pitch your solutions to people because we need to convince the world saying this is the solution that will help you, right? So we also um, monitor those uh, playbacks, you know, or the presentations that the teams give. And the following Friday, this end of this two weeks is the final presentation. The teams learn how to present it in a 15 minute you know, window. And uh, you know, the two leadership teams, you know, we just kind of judge it, you know, saying what was good, what was not good. And then we allow them a few more days, could be another week or sometimes uh, two weeks uh, for us to know the results of this phase one. So when we do the design challenge, based on the interest and based on the subject matter, it also can uh, get into the phase two, phase three. Typically, when we do the design challenges, the phase one is just to bring out those challenges in the, in the subject matter which we are going into to see what are the possible solutions. And phase two would be to create a, a final uh, you know, RFQ kind of a scenario, right? We just want to get to a requirement statement that we can go and pitch to potential sponsors. Your last part of the question, will they be available to people? Yeah, sure, they can be available. We find the ideal uh, person or company that wants to implement in their region. So that will be part of the phase two. And then we get into the phase three, which is actually implementing that in that place. And then we start measuring for success. So it's uh, it, we're just getting the first phase of the two weeks of the challenge, but this is not the end of it. But you will know at the end of the, maybe a month from uh, 24th, we will know what are all the findings of these seven teams. For example, uh, the teams can come up with various options, but we ask them to present one, which they think would be saleable, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And then also they could say, these are the five other solutions our team came up with. And then at the end of the uh, challenge, we ask them, we evaluate all of the other options as well, because maybe a sponsor might be interested in the one that they did not, the team did not choose to present, but that may be more useful in a given region because this is global, right? Yeah. So we could go and present it to those people. Uh, we, we publish all this in our mutual websites. And then the IP is, you know, it's, uh, it could be open source uh, or they have to come back to uh, the WPO and WDO to seek, you know, saying how would they want to do that. So we, we haven't thought through that because we usually go through this uh, after the first phase. We understand, you know, if there are uh, 25 solutions or 15 solutions. So it may be pertinent for us to uh, uh, mention here that when we did the uh, uh, challenge with UN Women Asia Pacific, the topic was, you know, how do we prevent violence against women and girls? So there, you know, we did the phase one quite successfully. And then the phase two was also done where, you know, we took these solutions out of the uh, challenge came about 25 solutions. And, you know, we, we then, we are still evaluating, you know, some of them, and then we are also identifying potential sponsors who will take it and implement it because the ultimate goal is to implement it in every possible region in the world. It may take maybe five years, but at least we know that you know we are getting there. The first one could be, the pilot could be within the end of this year, but we know that once it is successful, a lot of people will adopt. So that's the uh, goal for our challenge out here. Thank you. You Thank know, Trim, if I can just add on there on that last piece that Srini was talking about, if you take uh, like point number six uh, on the challenge statement about developing a packaging that's uh, child-proof, but easy to open for the elderly, now, I come out of the pharmaceutical environment, so th this is a, uh, you know, this, this was real uh, 37 years ago when I came into the industry, and it still is. It's still an issue. Now, imagine if this is fixed and, and we have a solution for it, what that means for openability in the pharma industry globally. 
in, in, and I'm just taking one, you know, one aspect, you know, uh, the, 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 the impact uh, is immeasurable. Phenomenal, right? It's, it's really phenomenal. If you're able to solve that one problem. Uh, yeah. And you know, the other one, e the e-commerce one, which is now really taken off during COVID-19, as you know, Tim. Mm -hmm. And but imagine if we come up with a, a, a sustainable packaging, fully sustainable in that sector, what difference it will make to the e-commerce world from a packaging, um, you know, doing the right thing and, and using the right sort of componentry and materials. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, I would so love to be a fly on the wall, or on the, the virtual wall at least, um, between uh, 24th and, uh, of May and, and 4th of June. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing the, the outcome and uh, seeing some of these activities gradually um, manifesting themselves in, in, the, the, in the marketplace and, and uh, innovation that inspires us all. Um, so, and, and also, of course, coming back and seeing those broad smiles that uh, Pierre has uh, just uh, predicted. Uh, so I, I hope we have a chance to, to touch base again sometime in the future on this. Um, Srini, uh, uh, Srini Vasan and Pierre Pinar, thank you so much for taking the time um, so late and so early in your respective days uh, to, to share this really, really exciting story with us and, and congratulations on this collaboration. Thank you, Tim. Thank you.